Should you wear western hats in the rain? Should you wear dress hats, fedoras, in the rain? A lot of people ask me that when they come to the shop. And, you know, we have a stock answer we're kind of told to tell people. And um, I don't know if I should tell you now or I should leave you hanging. Uh, basically, we're told to tell people a light, uh, a light sprinkle, a light drizzle is fine. They are rainproof, but they're not meant for heavy rains. And um, we're pretty much, I'm going to say, 75% fedoras and dress hats and stuff. I'm going to say pretty much 25 to 30 percent western hats and uh, there's a good 20 percent that's kind of half and half you know like the uh, outbacky kind of half western half not western stuff but um we're predominantly uh you know fedora this kind of stuff we're one of the biggest selections anywhere you know and people come in and they ask so you know what's the deal okay just because a hat is made out of uh you know, something that's very rainproof it doesn't mean that it's going to respond well the next day. Okay, it still can dry out of shape. We don't worry about it leaking water. We worry about it losing its shape and looking like crap the next day. So, Western hats are very, very thick. Much thicker. And it's a different felt. They call it Western felt. The material you start with is a Western hat body. So you got a Western body and you got a dress body. Uh, dress bodies, you have things that are velour. Velours are like uh, velvety textures. You have double-sided velours, which have this side and this side. And you have single-sided, which they generally use for ladies' hats. You know, stuff that's you know, kind of turned down, where you basically never see the underside and stuff. But um, they have long hair beaver finishes. They have all sorts of different finishes. But then they have Western felt, which is a totally different hat body. And it starts off so thick. It's just like, I can't tell you how thick it is. You know, picture maybe, maybe, I don't know, four of those or more or something. It's really, really thick. And they, uh, they sand it down. You know, when you see this stuff, it's so thick. You're like, oh, I want a hat made out of that stuff. You know, it's like incredibly... Western hat bodies are really, really thick when they start out before they haven't been stretched over, you know, hat molds. When they get stretched over the wooden blocks, they get elongate and they get thinner, and they also soften, they uh, sand them down and uh, make finishes on them, buff them out. That also takes felt off and makes them thinner too. Doing that stuff by hand is a real art. It's very difficult to buff the entire hat out, sand it from like, you know, that thick to, you know, that thick completely by hand and to have it all even. Believe me, it's way, way harder than you think. Um, it's kind of like pottery or something, you know, the entire side of a pot has to be exactly the same, uh, you know, thickness. So you think it would be easy for you to make ceramics, but it's probably not, you know. Same kind of thing. So, um, Getting back to, uh, off that tangent, back to the uh, real uh, conversation, Western felt is completely different. And, well, you can wear Western felt in the rain. There are some felts that are kind of in the middle, um, over stiffened felts, you know, felts that are kind of like the open road is not quite Western felt. It's somewhere in between. It's kind of like not a full out felt felt like a, like a rancher, which is much thicker. A uh, tycoon, a shasta, a, uh, I don't know, a skyline, a Carson. Those are thicker western bodies. An open road is thinner. I'm going to say an open road is not the best hat for the rainstorms and stuff. Um, it's very easy for you to get a wavy brim on that. I would say don't wear that in the rain. Dress hats, again, don't wear them in the rain. It's okay, you know, if you get some, you know, like uh, some snow on it, a little misting, a little sprinkling, you know. But when it's starting to get soaked and waterlogged, you know, and the weight of the rain is changing the way that it's drying and everything, all that stuff, it's got to be really great felt. And I'm not talking about really expensive felt just because you just paid, you know, um, $1,800 for your new Gucci hat doesn't mean that it's super, super felt. 
Um, expensive and great felt are not always the same thing, believe me. Um, sometimes you'll have a hat that's $200, that's super thick, it's made out of mostly rabbit, and uh, then you'll buy a hat that's all beaver, thinking that you're moving up and you're getting like a great upgrade, but the beaver is so expensive that they're going so thin in it that the beaver is just, it just curls as soon as it gets wet because it's too thin and they're being really cheap with the body. They're, you know, it feels soft, it feels light, it feels luxurious because it's thin, it's light, and it's soft. But is that going to handle rain well? No. Um, they don't stiffen it because they want it to feel luxurious, soft, and natural. As soon as the rain hits it, um, when hats are too thin, they curl. They curl into corners like this. And the whole hat turns into this like kind of square. They all curl into corners. Uh, like these pre-bankruptcy uh, bourses, they would never do that. They could get as wet as they possibly can. They'll never, ever, ever curl because the felt is so good. You could pretty much do anything to this stuff. It has no effect, you know, waterlog it. But um, that's very rare. There's not a lot of felts like that. Um, and even these are gone now. You can't get this stuff anymore. So, um, I'm going to say like this. Wear your westerns in the rain. It's okay. Okay. Make sure you hang them when you get home. Hang them up so they're just floating, basically. Just like this. Just hang it. it does Next question everybody says is, it doesn't matter this way or this way. doesn't matter. But what does matter is if you see something that's out of shape, fix that. Because that will dry exactly the way it is now. That's what you're going to see you know, tomorrow when it dries. No surprises. So straighten everything out. Straighten your brim out. Get it you know, nice and straight. Generally what I do is I just kind of rub it against the edge of the straight edge. Like I'll go up to a tape and I'll do something like this to it. And then I'll hang it up. It's like the quick way of straightening your brim. But yeah. Check the crown. You don't want it to dry all pinched and weird. You want it to dry in its original shape. The shape that came from the factory or whatever you know, shape that you like. Because when it dries, that's going to be your new shape. So in other words, if let's say you got a weird handle like this from gravity. When that hat dries, this becomes your new permanent shape. It's just like steaming the shape in. Rain is even stronger than steaming it and it's this it will be your you know so in other words if you pop this hat out right now this will pop back to the factory shape that's what steaming does it's a memory you can see it's even though i've rolled it and i've pinched it shaped it a zillion different ways in the last two decades you know um it always still goes back to its factory center crease because that's what's shaped in there with steam and that's what's blocked in there too now if you have a hat that dries a certain way, there's your new permanent shape until you re-steam it. So, make sure before your hat dries, you get it back to its... What I do sometimes is I just open it up and then I just... I feel for it. You just you feel where those factory pinches are just by kind of feeling. It's all in there. Just very gently. Okay. Get it exactly the way you want it and then hang it, straighten the prim. Okay, the next day there's no surprises. It will dry just like that. If you see a little twist in the brim, fix it. Because that's what you're going to get tomorrow. Okay. I'm going to say don't wear your dress hats in the rain. Um, just don't do it. Um, if you have like four or five dress hats, then I'm um, fedoras, you know. If you have stuff like this and then you have one of them that's like, you know, your oldest one and you don't care if it loses its shape, Put that one as your rain hat. Oh, it might rain today. Wear that, you know, your most jumpiest one. So I'm going to put this one on today because you know, it's raining. Now, you may get 100 rains on that and it will have zero effect on it. But it's always a gamble. Sometimes it'll have no effect at all. Other times it'll, you know, rain will really, really mess your hat up. You don't always know. Every hat is different. Um, a lot of it has to do with drying. You can't dry in a hot room, too, um, and how you dry it. You know, if you dry it like, you know, like that, it will dry like that. If you, you know, try to put it in a good shape, get everything cool, 
then it'll dry like that the next day, you know. So, however you want it to dry, you set it like that the night before. But I'm going to say, yeah, when it's really nasty out, raining, snowing, wear your oldest hat, you know, wear your junk hat or your cheapest one or the one that you care least about messing up in case it gets splashed or, you know, rolls into the snow or something like that. Um, you want to take a gamble, take a gamble, you know, see what happens. Um, I'm going to say certain hats will be okay, um, a Kubra's will be okay. If you wear your Kubra Style Master or a Kubra Traveler or a Kubra, uh, a Kubra, Kubra Petey, Banjo Patterson, any of their hats, the Riverina, the Snowy River, um, those are almost like dress hats, fedoras, with Western felt. So their felt is so hardy that you could wear you know, almost every fedora and you'll just be fine. Um, I'm going to say fedoras from a Kubra, you're good. Um, Stetson Westerns, 100%, so I'm going to say they'll be good. Make sure you hang them, you keep them away from heat. If it's like uh, February and your house is blasting steam, that's not good. That's like putting a hair dryer on it or throwing it into the dryer. So you don't want to do that. Uh, crack the window in the bathroom or something, hang it up in there, and then just let that room be a little cooler than the rest of the house. Let it dry in there or crack the window in the kitchen or something. But um, yeah, don't let it dry in the heat in the hot room. The leather is going to shrink a little bit every year, a half a millimeter. And then after, you know, a couple of years, it's going to feel real tight. So that's essentially it. I'm going to say wear your westerns. Don't wear your dress hats. Uh, if you get to wear your dress hat, stick to the Akubras. Um, wear a rain hat, which is a cheap thing. You could get a poplin rain hat made out of that raincoat kind of cottony, nylon-y cotton stuff, poplin. You can get them cheap. You know, an American one might be 75 or something, a Chinese one, you know, who cares? It might be 50. You could probably get a cheap Chinese one off of Amazon somewhere. Um, rain hats are just rain hats. They're cheap. They're meant to be cheap, so you don't mess up your expensive hat. You could also get a light felt. Get a $110 light felt um, crushable like our Atlantic or our Blues Fedora or our Outback hat. Those are three light felt crushers. You can put them in your pocket when you go out to dinner. You could also wear them in the rain. They'll be fine and you're not going to panic because you paid, you know, a little bit less. And, um, Generally, those light bulbs are okay. They're not going to last you like, you know, 30 years if you do that. But, um, you know, they're light bulbs. So if you get like 15, 20 years out of it, you know, for 100 bucks, it's probably a very good uh, investment, I would say. Um, Westerns, yeah, they're generally okay. I'm going to say watch the wool felt Westerns. The wool stuff, you got to be very careful in the way they dry. Make sure it's in shape. Make sure it's hanging and no heat. If the room is hot, that's enough. Crack the window or something. Um, let it dry cold. You know, it's better than letting it dry hot. And, um, yeah, open roads, I wouldn't wear them in the rain. If you've got an old open road, you know, like an old vintage one, that's probably going to be okay. The newer ones are a little bit, uh, a little bit thin for that. I'm going to say it's it's closer to a stiffer dress hat than a western hat, an open road, technically, the felt-wise. Um, so I wouldn't do that. Um, certain hats are going to respond very, very well. You know, like you might have a Stetson Roadster and it'll do 100% perfect in the rain. And then you'll take your Stetson Temple and the next day and that one's all wavy. There's no real, you know, some, it's a gamble sometimes. Um, what it is, is a lot of it has to do with the thickness of the felt, how much they stiffened it, um, and every, um, every hat is a little different. So if it's a gamble, you know, I say why risk it? Don't wear your fedoras in the rain, wear them in a drizzle, uh, you know, very light snow or drizzle or something. Wear your westerns, you'll be good. And uh, or buy a, you know, a cheap rain hat, use your old hat, Keep that in circulation for the, the nasty days, the blizzards, and save your good hats for, you know, when you want to look cool and stuff. Like my Kelly green hats, I don't usually wear them in the rain, I wear them at work, um, 
those Kelly green ones like on my avatar, my little thumbnail thing. But um, many, many times I've worn those in the rain, just like walking to the corner to get some coffee or some ice cream or something. And, you know, I knew it was okay because that particular felt was kind of very special. But um, it's different if you're a hat salesman too. When you're selling and selling and selling hats and steaming them and steaming them, you, you almost know which hat exactly is going to do how well. It's hard to explain, but you kind of know. Just through steaming them and working with them, you know which hats are a little more sensitive than others. Um, sometimes it's going to be like um, sort of a physics thing. If a hat has a raw edge, a long brim, and it's soft, those are three things that equal a hat that will very easily weigh down when there's a lot of rain on it. See? And I'll dry like this. Then, then your flange is gone. The curve is the flange. That's like a, a breaking point. It's a, a hinge. It allows it to snap up and down. Once, once that scoop is gone and flattens out, you know, everything just goes to crap right there. So you don't want the, it weighing down. Um, people like raw edges, raw edges with whip stitches. It's the mark of an expensive hat, but when a hat is folded over and stitched down like a hem, that's called a welt, an overwelt or an underwelt, it gives the hat more strength. When the hat is stiffer, it gives it more strength to hold up its shape. Uh, the stiffener is just holding it, it's like a plastic coating. When a hat has a shorter brim, it has a nice sharp curve and a welted edge usually, like a short brim hat. Those are great. Those little short brim hats with the welted edges, you know, like the old man hats, those fur felt dress hats do well. But big brim hats like this that are soft, that have raw edges, they generally don't do well in the rain and stuff. So a lot of it is physics. Um, you know, with very few exceptions, like I said, like pre-bankruptcy Borsalinos did very, very well, um, no matter what it was, as long as it was quality superior and, you know, something that's over, like, seven years old or something, you know, it's got to be kind of old, I don't know how many years it is now, but yeah, something like that, it's got to be at least eight, you know, nine years, eight, maybe seven years, and, um, then it's almost like considered a vintage or a new old stock piece, and nobody's really got those now for sale. Um, stick to your westerns, you know. Westerns are heavier, there's a little bit more of a break-in process, but those are working hats, and they'll take it. Western hats are meant to take a beating, you know, for your horse to run over it, or you know, a dusty trail and all that stuff. Dress hats are meant to be light, they're meant to be fashionable, you know, to keep the elements off of you and everything, but uh, they're meant to look good, they're meant to be lightweight and comfortable. Um, and the whole thing with uh, water repellency and durability and all that kind of stuff, that's on the back burner more, you know, where that's on the front burner for a Western. Um, so, if that makes any sense at all.
I hate being out of tune. It's like when you're out of tune, nothing seems to click. Everything is just going against the grain. It's like the mark of somebody sucky being out of tune. Definitely the mark of a novice. Kind of like when you're jamming with somebody new and everybody's feeling each other out and one guy doesn't like to use a tuner. Oh, I don't use a tuner, I like to go by ear. And he's always a little out of tune, a little bit. And everybody notices it. And nobody's saying anything. But the first thing they're thinking is like, okay, that guy's not gonna work. Yeah, he's got a lot of soul, a lot of energy, and this and that, but he sucks, you know. Being out of tune really sucks. I need new strings. Hopefully they're in the mail today. They should be downstairs.